I built four different weather instruments that I'm going to show you, and I'm going to show you the simpler ones first and the more complicated ones later. The first one that I'm going to show you is a wind vane. I built the wind vane out of a pen, a pencil, a straw, a piece of paper, and some tape. It's definitely the simplest one. The way the wind vane works is it directs you in the direction that the wind is coming from. So whatever direction the wind is coming from, the wind vane will turn and point towards where the wind is coming from. Remember that wind is a little bit confusing because the wind comes from a direction and blows in the opposite direction. So a, wind, a north wind comes from the north but blows towards the south. You were going to say that? Awesome. So in order to make the wind vane work, we need a little bit of wind. So Diana, I'm going to ask you to turn the fan on to number two. Will you turn so that you can look at the fan? And Aisha, I'm going to give you this to hold. And I'm going to ask you to walk over towards the fan. Okay, now what I want you to do is I want you to turn the wind vane so it points in a different way so that we can see that the fan will always move it to point towards where the wind is coming from. Try to set down your notebook and try to use your hand and see if you can make it point in a different way. Oh. And it doesn't work. It will always move itself back to the direction that the wind is coming from. Whether you twist it or whether you turn it, it will point in the direction where the wind is coming from. Excellent. Can I have it back and fan off? Wind vane. Second thing that I built is more complicated. The second one that I built is a, an anemometer which measures the wind speed. I built my anemometer out of another pencil, another pin, two straws this time, a piece of clay, four halves of ping pong balls, and some tape. So what I did is I literally took a ping pong ball and I took a knife from the science lab and I just cut right down this line and cut my ping pong ball in half and then taped the half onto the straw. And the way the anemometer works is that when wind hits the center of the ping pong ball inside, it spins around in a circle. And the, the faster the wind hits it, the faster it should spin. And the reason that the wind doesn't hit this as much is because the wind goes around the outside of the ping pong ball and doesn't catch it as much. Yes? It's just like wind a wind chime. It is kind of like a wind chime. Like the wind chime blows a lot more in a stronger wind. I agree. It's very similar in that way. Yes? Can you say that? Yes. I'm happy to say the, the parts again. It has a pencil, a pin, two straws, clay to keep the straws from separating, four ping pong ball halves, and tape. Those are all the ingredients. So, in order to do this one, we're going to see the fan at some different levels. You can hold this. Will you turn the fan on to one first? And you can see that our anemometer starts spinning pretty slowly with the fan on at a low level. Diana, will you turn it to two? and it starts spinning a lot more quickly. Diana, will you turn it to three? Hold it up a little higher. I mean, okay. And you can see it starts spinning really quickly. Excellent, fan off. And I'll take my anemometer back. Yes, RBN. Is there any, is, does water have compounds or atoms? Totally, it's the, the so atoms. Everything is made out of molecules, so yes. Okay, anemometer. Rogelio, one last question about the anemometer. <coughs> A wind vane. Anemometer, yes. Great. Okay, material number three, or piece of equipment number three. Roger, what is it? Barometer. This one is a barometer. This barometer I made out of a glass jar full of air, a balloon that I cut off the skinny part on the end of the balloon, 
and I only took the big round part of the balloon. Rubber bands to hold the balloon in place really tight, and I don't want the air to escape in or out. A straw, so it can be really lightweight. A piece of clay to hold the pin in place, so the pin can point to an exact right spot. And then tape to hold my straw, so my straw can go up and down. So what I'm going to say is, oh, and a piece of paper that I don't want to show you yet. You're right, thank you. What I'm going to say is, what will happen if the air pressure on the barometer increases? The air pressing down on the barometer. What would happen, Brian? If it increases, the balloon goes down and the straw points up. Can everyone see how that would work? If it increases, the balloon goes down, the straw points higher. And now I can show you that I have a way of measuring this that will allow me to see if the straw is pointing higher or not. What would happen if the air pressure is lower on what's above the barometer? What would happen if the air pressure decreases, Lamar? The, um, the, straw, would go down. the straw would point down because the balloon would press up and the straw would point down. Now, Roger, you asked a question yesterday that I gave a wrong answer to. You said, can we take this outside sometime and test it? And I said, it doesn't matter because inside is the same air pressure as outside. And I, I was actually wrong about that because when we have the windows shut, the air pressure in here is different than what it is outside. So I'm going to ask you to go over to Mr. Gant's desk. There's a way that you can open the window with that far latch and open up the window so that the air pressure in here becomes a little bit more like what the air pressure is outside. I noticed this because when the heating and air conditioning system is blowing air into the room, that the pressure was higher on my barometer. No, my window doesn't open. That's why I had you open that one. So I'm going to ask you to look at the barometer and look where it's pointing, and I'm going to make a little mark where it's pointing, just right about here. So. I made the mark at the highest spot on here. Taya, how does the mark today compare to where my marks were yesterday? Because this is the first time I've done this today. Um, it looks like those were lower, and I think the middle of the middle. So yesterday's marks were lower, and today's mark is higher. Tell me why that shouldn't surprise you based on what we already know about the weather today. Rahelia, why should that not surprise you? Yesterday it was 1,005 was the pressure. 1,015.4. So I'm going to write that in, that today's measurement was 1,015 and 4 tenths. Because now the barometer is pointing higher, and it's pointing right about to where I have 1,015 and 4 tenths. And yesterday I wrote it down actually with some other classes where it was 1,006 only. So that's the barometer. The last one that I'm going to go through today measures the humidity. This is a wet bulb and dry bulb thermometer. This one is made out of just a few materials. It's made out of a rubber stopper to hold both my thermometers. It's made out of two thermometers. And then I took a piece of paper that can get wet like a paper towel. And then I took a rubber band and I put it on there so it would stay on there. So. The first thing we need to do is we need to check the temperatures on these thermometers. What's the temperature on the thermometer? About 22? No, 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 not 25. Not up to 25. I think it might be a little higher than 22. Is it 23? I think it's normally about 23 in here. Do you agree that it's 23? Yes. What is the red stuff? The alcohol. The alcohol that... But you said that you don't... No, we don't use mercury mostly anymore, but we do use alcohol in thermometers. Oh. Taya, do you agree that it's 23? Yes, I agree. That's mercury? Do you agree no. that it's 23? Alcohol. Okay, there's some talking and people not focused, and that's really bugging me. <coughs> do you agree that it's 23? 24 or 23. So the other thing that's really important is the two thermometers, since they're both in this same room, they should be the same temperature. Lashana, are they the same temperature? The two thermometers, they're not pointing to about the same level? They are, right? 
Akeem, do you agree that they are at the same level, the two thermometers? No. Do you agree they are at the same level? No. Do you think they look pretty different? Yes. yes. Which one looks higher? Uh, the wet one. Okay, so the wet one's not wet yet. Mm, I don't really agree. I think they really look to be about the same. Yes. I remember when you said that our uh, room temperature was 23 degrees Celsius and that was the, that's what they're on. And that's what they're on. So even if they're not at the exact same point, they're really close, right? Like they're at pretty much the same degree. Isn't that true? Well, Sean, at pretty much the same degree. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take water. Taya, will you hand me that water that's on my desk, please? And I'm going to gently get this piece of paper around one thermometer wet. And I'm getting it wet with water that's at room temperature that's been sitting here for a while, so the water is not making it cold itself. Then I'm going to wave around this thermometer in the air. So they were already both at 23, now I'm going to do this. What happens to something that's wet when it waves around in the air? Felicia? It gets cold. It gets cold because of evaporation, because it's drying. So think about a day when you've gone to the pool or the beach and it's a real sunny, clear, windy day. How do you feel after you leave the water when it's sunny, clear, and windy? Samantha? Cold. You feel really cold. What if it's a really humid day where the air feels really wet around you? How do you feel when you leave the water at the beach on that day? I mean, Anta? Warm. You feel a lot warmer because it's not drying you as much. So what I'm going to ask is, if our classroom is really dry, what's going to happen to my thermometer when I wave it around? Taya, so yeah, what will happen? I think it will get hotter. If the classroom is really dry? Yes. Yeah, if it's dry, what would happen to all the water in my towel? It will dry out. It will dry out. Wouldn't that make it colder? Oh, yeah. Okay. So if our classroom is dry, we expect this thermometer to get colder. What if the air in our classroom is really humid and really wet? What would we expect then, Akeem? It's going to be moist, but what will happen? Will this dry as much? Probably not. Let's see if we got results. Oh yeah, we totally got results. Are they at the same point now? No. Not even close. What's my wet thermometer at now? 18. Do you agree it's at about 18 now? 18 or 19? Do you agree? 18 or 19? I'll move it around. Actually, Do you agree that it's around 18 or 19? It's a lot lower than the other one now, right? Remember when you said they were a little different before? Now they're a lot different, right? Do you agree? 18 or 19? But how come the, this, that one is what? I mean, that one went higher. This one didn't go higher. It's still around 23. This one got colder. Who can explain to Akeem again why this one got colder? Jeffrey, why did it get colder? It got colder because as when you waved it, it evaporated and it got colder. As we waved it, it evaporated and it got colder. I need you to write down our two measurements. I need you to write down dry bulb, 23 degrees. In your notebook, underneath where you might have written down some notes for today, or if you just wrote down today's humidity or do now. Celsius. Celsius, 23 degrees Celsius. Dry bulb is what? Jeffrey, you don't need to worry about writing this yet. Degrees. The dry bulb was 23 degrees Celsius. The dry bulb, 23 degrees Celsius. What was the wet one again? 18 or 19. So we'll put like 18 and a half. Actually, it's clearly at 19 now. I'm going to go with 19. So wet bulb, 19 degrees Celsius. Wet bulb, 19 degrees Celsius. So there's a calculation that we have to do with this, and in order to do that, I need you to go back to feet. So I'm going to ask everyone to please carefully get your notebook and all of your stuff and your chair back to your seat. We're good. Don't stop.